Shades, D with DC Photography, and I'm going to do a more extreme edit on this image, um, sort of inspired from these posters, um, but you'll notice the difference is that this is obviously a studio setting, studio lighting, and the image, oops, I'm going to use, is neither of those, um, outside, and um, it was overcast day, so there's really no um, harsh lighting, um, creating that nice dimension of highlights and um, shadows that some of these images, as you see with this image here and here, how the nice shadows and the highlights and all that good stuff. Um, my lighting is completely different, but we're going to play around with and see what we can come up with. Um, first thing I'm going to do is take my image, uh, like I always say, and never touch my background layer leave alone. I'm going to try to get the background to be a solid color. I'm just going to pick a green and paint over this on a new layer. I'm going to actually end up adding a texture um, on the background. So um, if it's not perfect on this part, it's not a big deal. Sorry, I was itching. I can see. Okay, so we're just gonna try to get in and just get rid of all those crazy um, textures in the background right now, just to try to create a nice solid color in the background. Not have to be perfect right now. I'm just gonna brush right over this part too. just get some flyaway so I'm actually going to try to also um, smooth those out with the color. Alright, so what I'm also going to do is grab a purple and try to um, go over the shirt as well. It's got a lot of design on it and it's kind of distracting my eyeballs. So we're just going to slightly brush over and try to get rid of some of that uh, glaring design. And this is more of a, a painterly effect so it's okay to use your paintbrush. So it's kind of like the effect I want to go for eventually in the end anyway, which is what I'm going to use a combination of um, a texture to help with that also. So if you have an image that's actually in studio with a solid shirt, you're even better to start with than I am. Um, but I wanted to start with something more challenging, so I pulled this image out. Plus I loved her look in this picture, and she was just too adorable. So another thing I'm going to do really quick, really quick is clone this tiny bit of um, hair where the grass blade was going over the hair and I didn't like it. Okay, two seconds there. <laughs> so before, after, and that was just sort of making the background solid and helping blend the shirt just a bit more. Next thing I'm going to do is do a few gradients, a not purple. We'll go with the not what color, don't hit that button. A black gradient. And I'm going to change the angle to come more from almost the entire side here. Uh, set that to overlay and pull it down. Mommy, a monster! Sorry, I was trying to get these done really quick, and my son wants to go find monsters right now, so I'll be doing that as soon as I finish this video. <laughs> um, overlay, you can also, you can play around with your blend modes on what you want to set it to. Um, generally, overlay, or maybe I'll just do soft light actually on this one. 
um, overlays tend to get really orange, but that's not a big deal because I'm going to also um, mute the colors in just a minute. And I'm going to get a white gradient. <clears throat> I went and tra changed my color, my foreground color to white so I didn't have to deal with uh, changing it in a minute. That way it's already selected for me here. I'm just going to change the angle just a bit here. Same thing, same blend mode. Um, or I may even go with overlay to make it even stronger on the highlight part. So really quickly, that was before, that was after. <clears throat> just a few just some changes. I'll go down. It's just sort of creating um, a dynamic shadow <clears throat> highlight. Kind of controlling where the light and shadow is coming from. I'm also going to do a gradient map. I should have flipped those around, but black to white. And uh, do that black and white. You can see when you turn all those off, the difference on that would be. But I actually am using this to mute my colors, so I'm going to pull it down to like 20%, leave the blend mode, and you can tell that it kind of muted all those colors down a bit. Get a levels layer, pull my midtones up, pull my shadow, my blacks down, pull my highlights up just a bit on that part. And then blend that down just a bit more. Then I'm going to get a texture. And I'm going to just go find one of my old textures. I probably should upload these somewhere for free because I don't use them. They're just ones I created and put them in a pack a long time ago. Um, <clears throat> but now they're just on my computer and not being used. So I need to upload them for you guys. And I'm just going to turn it. And place it on my image. I went to file place, found my picture, put it on there, change it to overlay. Sorry, I just um, keep getting out of to throw me off. Um, I'm gonna get, I put a mask on it. Just what I do with everything. Um, I'd rather mask things off than um, actually mess with my pixel layers. So I'm just masking it off the face, the hair, and I'm going to mask it also, if it'll let me in a second, there we go, off a little bit of this shirt, and the hair down here, and I don't mind that it blends on down to the texture down here. <clears throat> I'm actually going to duplicate that layer. Uh, set it to a normal and pull that down just a bit as well. So we got two different type textures on here. And they're both kind of creating a different look on there as well. The next thing I'm going to do is pull the level layer. I'm going to add some color tones, um, add some more blues some yellow, uh, magenta, maybe some green. The best thing to do is play around until you figure out what you want to color tone to be since this is more of a fun edit. Um, that's better. Um, so I'm going to pull my shadows back down too as well. Just a bit. Alright, so that was here, and that's just adding more color tones to it. And the final step I'm going to do is, as always, my Dodge Burning overlay. I'm going to get a black brush. We'll set it to 40%. And um, I'm going to brush on strong so you can see the difference, and I'll just play around with my opacity after I'm finished. And 
continue brushing here and I'm going to do some um, extreme contouring and this like I said this is not a normal edit it's just more of a fun artistic edit so um, if you want to try out new things new techniques it's fun to play with uh, dodge burning especially contour contouring contouring I'm trying to think how to pronounce that word right now um, a face because it helps out a lot um, to know where you play where you want to burn where you want to dodge so if you know anything about makeup you'll know where to do your contouring so you want to dodge um, the highlights and burn where your shadows generally will be at and I'm just going to do a little more extreme on that side and like I said this is very strong and I'm going to eventually fix my opacity down so it blends slightly better than this Alright. So pull it back down. I was really strong. And there's before and there's after. It's still um adds a lot of dimension to the image without pulling away too much from looking unnatural um, but it definitely does look like there's a difference on the image okay. and the final step I'm going to do is uh, smooth the skin out and smooth the image and I'm going to do that go back to my background duplicate it get a high pass layer we're gonna do that like 14 maybe here 14 sounds good let's try it out the best thing is to try out what's what works for your image control I which is actually gonna invert your high pass as you can see Oops. it smoothed it out like crazy I changed my blend mode to overlay after I hit control I and you can play with your blend mode um, soft light's going to make it not as strong hard light, vivid light are even stronger on the smooth so um, once I find the smooth I want I'm going to click the mask <coughs> while holding um, oops, holding alt down it actually goes when it goes ahead and creates an inverted mask so that I can just get my white brush brush it on And since this is more of a painterly effect anyway, um, if it's more smooth, then it's just, I don't usually ever touch <laughs> skin on um, children, ever. <clears throat> but we're playing around with our editing and the trying a different, um, more of a different painting effect, so it's okay to play around with that. All right. And you can see what the layer turned off and turn on. It really kind of adds this painted effect to the face. And you can bl bl turn on the opacity if it's too strong. Okay. And then let me hold Alt. So that was before. And that was after. This is just adding a really artistic paler effect with using some textures to play around with. And, um, and um, uh, hopefully we'll be some new techniques you'll learn and some things you can experiment and play around with and like I always say I recommend people to um, play around with your editing so you can always play with your blend modes play with your opacities um, and even go in and tweak everything a little bit more if needed oh, whoops not like that I need to zoom out just a bit because it bugs me Alright, so that was before, like I said, normal image, and that's just more of an artistic, painted, almost painted like a uh, portrait shot. Really fun to play with this uh, technique. And some things to do, some new things to try out. Hopefully that helped you guys. <laughs> Thank you very much.